Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Peace today. We're glad that you've made it in. Especially if you're a visitor today, welcome. We hope you'll sign the guest book. It's on a table in the gathering area in the center there. Just so we know who's worshiping with us, we invite you to do that. Um, just a few announcements, a few things for you to be aware of. If you know Jack Krzyzewski, he's a member of our church. He turns 100 tomorrow. Go find him in the donut room after worship. So go make sure you say happy birthday. We sang to him at the 8 o'clock service. Make sure you find him and say happy birthday to him. Um, just a few other opportunities for you today. Welcome to new members. We're going to have that as part of our service today. We, you can see all their names and a little bit of information about them in the bulletin. We're always grateful for new members today. You can buy geraniums to celebrate Pentecost. Those envelopes are in the gathering area um, and in the church office if you'd like to buy those uh, for Pentecost. Our call process is continuing. Our call committee has finished the ministry site profile, the MSP. They've, uh, we've passed it on to the council because they need to approve it. We're meeting Tuesday night as a council to approve that. So hopefully we're on the cusp of be, uh, right as we put that out to the online service. We hope you continue to pray for whoever is feeling called to uh, interview here, and hopefully that will fit. But for the call committee and all the whole process, we're grateful for all those prayers for it all. The scholarships uh, applications are due by tomorrow. So if you have someone uh, in, in any kind of school after high school, um, check that out. You can have that in by tomorrow by 3 o'clock, I believe. The women of the ELCA have a conference coming up, so April 27th. If you'd like to be a part of that, check the details there. Their charity, the women's charity, is coming up April 20th as well. A great function, great event. Check out those details. And our veterans' breakfast, that's coming up in May. If you are a veteran, you can sign up for it. It's a free meal. Um, Bruce Sorensen does a lot of the organizing of that. It's a great event to honor our veterans. Please note that as well. And our... I can see why everyone's here. The kids are going to sing. Yay! I love it. Laura, bring them on in. Kids are going to sing Jesus Loves Me Today. And here they come.
Awesome job, guys. Thanks for singing. And now you're off to Sunday school, I suppose? Good. Thanks, Dan and Chris and all the teachers. We're grateful for them. As they are walking out, would you stand up and be nice to those nearest to you? Stand up and say good morning. Thanks, you guys. Our next song is We Sing. As our opening song today, we'll sing where across the crowded ways of life there are six verses today. <clears throat> where across the crowded ways of life where sound the cries of race and clan Above the noise of selfish strife, we hear your voice, O Son of Man. In haunts of wretchedness and need, on shadow thresholds dark with fears, from paths where hide the lures of greed, we catch the vision of your tears from tender childhood's helplessness from human grief and burden toil from famished souls from sorrow stress your heart has never known recoil the cup of water given for you still holds the freshness of your grace. Yet long these multitudes to view the strong compassion in your face. O Master from the mountain side, make haste to heal these hearts of pain among these restless throngs abide O oh, tread the city streets again till all the world shall learn your love and follow where your feet have trod till glorious from your heaven Above shall come the city of our God. We continue our worship this morning with a time of confession and forgiveness. We gather ourselves together here this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a few moments in silence as we prepare our hearts for our confession. And we continue. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, your followers long ago gave to your children something more powerful and more valuable than riches. They gave them healing. They gave them hope. As we worship this morning, we pray that you would bring healing and hope into our world and show us evidence of your presence in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Please be seated, everyone, as we sing our song before the word, one verse, and the refrain of, let us talents and tongues employ. talents and tongues employ reaching out with a shout of joy bread is broken the wine is poured christ is spoken and seen and heard jesus lives again earth can breathe again pass the word around loaves abound jesus lives again earth can breathe again pass the word around loaves abound our Bible reading for today, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, a story of Peter and John in the temple in Jerusalem. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and he said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. Here ends our reading for today. Children's sermon time. If we have any friends, we're going to want to come up. Come on up now for children's sermon. Right. All right, we're all going to say good morning on the count of three. One, two, three. Good morning. I'm glad you guys are here today. Did you guys have a good morning so far? Maybe. Is there donuts after worship or before? After. Yes. Yes is the right response. Yes. Good morning, Charlie. I'm glad you guys are here today because I need some help. Can you guys help me today? Maybe. All right, we're going to see if I can name out some things in the church because I'm having a hard time finding them. And you guys, I need your help, okay? All right, we're going to see if you can do the first one. Anyone, can you find and point at a candle? Can you guys see any candles there anywhere in the church? Anywhere in this area, can you see them? Are there any nearby, like maybe behind me on the altar right there? There's some candles. All right. How about anyone I can't see? I need to see a cross. Do you guys see a cross anywhere? Is there a cross anywhere up there? One right here. They're all over the place, right? All right, how about this? How about a pew? Do you guys know what a pew is? It's what the Star Wars blasters sound make. Pew, pew, pew. It's actually the seats. Those are called pews, the chairs that we sit in, right? Okay, now let's see what else. How about a smile? Do you guys, can you see a smile? I always see them on your guys' face. What about the rest of them? Are they smiling? 
So you just say smile, and people are like, ah, that's so nice. Smiles are good. Now, how about this one? How about a friend? Can you guys see a friend? Are there any friends that you guys have here? Maybe your moms and dads. Hopefully, they're your friends, right? Yes. All sorts of people here are friends. Now, here's the last one. This is a hard one. It's a hard time seeing it. Can you find and see and point out love? That's a hard one, isn't it? Love is a hard thing to see, but it's an easy thing to share. And that's actually what happened that day in the city of Jerusalem. A guy named Peter and John, they saw somebody. Did you guys use your eyes to see all those things? Yep, we use our eyes to see things. Peter and John saw a guy who needed to know God's love. He couldn't walk. He was lame. His legs didn't work anymore. And Peter and John, they saw him and they said, I don't have any money, but I'll give you God's love. And they shared God's love by healing him and telling him that he's not alone, that he doesn't need to be sad, that God loves him, and that God will forgive him always. Do you guys know how to point to God's love? Here, here's one place. Take your finger. Take your finger right up in the air. And you're going to point right at your own heart. Because that's where God's love is. It's for you. It's in you. And what Jesus wants us to do, we're like his first followers. Go and see other people and help them to see God's love too. That way we can help them and share God's love. We can talk to them and share God's love. All sorts of ways to helping people to see and share the love of God. Now we got to pray. How do we pray? We fold our hands. We close our eyes. We open our ears and our hearts. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our eyes. That gives us the gift of seeing so many good things in our life. And we thank you that we can see your love in our lives. Help us to help other people to see your love by sharing, by caring, and by loving others. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all God's children said, amen. All right, thanks for coming up. You guys can head on back to wherever. You're out, Charlie, you're out. She's fast, Jeremy, we know that. <laughs> well, brothers and sisters in Christ, to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Two things I want you guys to think about. There are two themes in the story. Sometimes you're not quite sure when you read a Bible story. I'm sure you're like me. You read these verses and you're like, what? What do I mean for me? These are pretty simple. If those of you who are paying attention during the children's sermon, it's always just for the kids, is it? Right. The first word is seeing. Can you all say seeing? How we see things is an important thing. And also the second word is healing. Can you all say healing? That's what this story is about. Now, if there's no application to your life today about seeing things and healing, I'm not sure if you're alive. Let's just say that right now. Seeing and healing. They all start off with different things. Now, here's the thing. Seeing is actually a part of our life, but is actually comprehending and being present. It's another way of understanding the word seeing. A lot of times, I bet you're like me. You go through life, and you're kind of blind. We try to actually live our lives. Have you ever been like seeing a horse team that wears the blinders so that they don't get spooked by everything near them as they're pulling a team or a, whatever they're pulling? That's kind of how we live our lives, isn't it? We live our lives not with our eyes open, with our eyes what? Shut or closed. We don't want to see the things around us. Our culture tells us not to only deal with ourselves. A group named One Time Blind, which is a fitting name for them, has a little video called Not My Problem about seeing. Here it is. What's up with your box? That's not mine. <laughs> oh, well, how long has it been here? Since before I got here. I don't know. It's not my, it's not my problem. Well, what is it? It's a problem. Oh, a problem. Right. Well, should I look at it? Knock yourself out. Uh, but you might want to think about that. Oh, why? Well, like I said, that's a problem. Well, whose problem is it? I don't know. It was here before I got here. Wait, so you don't know whose it is? No, and honestly, I don't really care. I've got more important things to do. Yeah, well, someone has to care. I mean, you can't just sit here forever. It's got to be someone's problem. Why? Why does it have to be someone's problem? Just don't look at it. Pretend it's not even there. Hey, 
There is no problem. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, wait. So what you're saying is it, it's not your problem. Right. And it's not my problem. Yeah. Uh, then whose problem is it? I, I know I'm not the only one who goes through life like that guy. I don't want to see it. I don't want to have to deal with it. But whose problem is it? That's a question for us all. A lot of times we go through life blind and not seeing. And many of you, how many of you can see me today? Can you see me today? Anyone see me today? Good. Your eyes work. Good job, everybody. How's your awareness? How's your vision? That's what this part of what this story is all about. How we see the world and how we're called as God's people, as we read these old stories, these ancient tales of Jesus' first followers, how they saw the world as a lesson to us, as a reminder, as a way for us to say we shouldn't go life living as if we can't see. And I know I'm not the only one. Have you ever been at the Walmart parking lot and you just drive past that person begging for their daily bread? I've got too much going on, don't you? There are too many things I have to do. I have too many responsibilities. I can't possibly stop and give this person one thing. Now, that's just one example, but here's the thing. Whenever I ask you, hi, how you doing? You're like, well, I'm busy. Have you ever responded like that? Aren't we all busy? We all have responsibilities. We all have things that we need to do in life. Does that make the problems of our world go away? It doesn't. We're called as God's people, especially in this way that we gather together and read these stories to remember that we're called to see the world around us. We're called to see as Peter and John did. This story actually has so many different words in it. It's only like 10 verses long, but all these different things that they mention are all about seeing. I love that little video because the guy's like, I don't have to see it. It's not my problem. I don't want to see it. This man at the gate, the beautiful gate, isn't it interesting that they call it and they name it? This man who was there was ugly. He was an eyesore. He was something that the people there no longer saw or recognized or saw as a person. He was there every day. Someone would help him walk there. He was lame from birth, and no one saw him. But when Peter and John come up, it says that the man who was blind, he saw them and put out his hand. And he said, do you have an alms for a person who can't work? Do you have alms for a poor person? Then they looked intently at him. How many times have you looked intently at someone? If you are married, you should say all the time about your spouse. Every time. I'm just saying right now. Just saying. If you don't look intently at them, put down whatever you're doing and pay attention with your primary relationships. And what do you do when God sees and gives you opportunity to see the things around us? They looked intently at him. He fixed his attention on them, waiting expectantly with a hand open for a what? An alms for a penny, for a fiver, whatever you want. All these different words from the story are about seeing. But Peter, I love his response. He says, I don't have any money to give you. I have no silver or gold. But what I do have, I will give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. And what does the guy do? He discos all the way to church. I, I just dated myself. Disco, everybody. Disco. He danced. He jumped up with joy. His ankles became strong because Peter gave to him healing, all because Peter saw him. He raised him up, grabbed him by the right hand, and saw him for the human he was. How many times in our lives do we immediately judge someone because we know nothing about them but just one thing we see on the peripheral, on the front, on the top? And other times when we don't see them at all because we don't have the time, we're just too busy to deal with it. I don't have the time for that, right? But how does God work? We gather together as God's people to make sure your eyes are open because there are opportunities all around us to see things as they are. Is life easy, everyone? I think I ask that pretty much every time I talk to you guys. It's kind of like my three questions. Is life hard? Yeah. Life has always been that way. It won't always get easier. You won't always have more free time to do those things. The opportunities are around us all the time. When you're driving, you see things that happen, you respond. Ways that people are needing things and you see them. Sometimes that can be a little exhausting. We had a funeral yesterday for Pam Keister. She was a member that was not a member here in the traditional sense. 
She had been watching online for three or four years. The chaplain called me the other week and said, so you're Pastor Stewart. I said, yes. You have someone here who says they're a member, but they've never been in your building. I'm like, cool, what's her name? She said, they've gotten so much about worshiping online with you. You cast that seed and you never know where it goes. Pam felt like a member of this and she was a member of our congregation. I knew her for two weeks. She passed. She was on hospice care. We had her funeral yesterday, supporting Steve and Haley and Emily, their two daughters, sharing words of care and grace. You never know when you take a moment to see someone what that will do. They called and said, will you go to the hospital? I went to the hospital. I said, here I am, everybody. They said, you're so bald. <laughs> Not really, I said that, because that's what you do, right? I never met them, but I was graced and blessed by Pam, who I had just met. What happens when we see people? What happens when we see opportunity around us? What happens when we see people for the humans and the way that God sees them? Here's a question for you, though. Do you have to save the world, everybody? No. You just have to see things. You just have to see the opportunities around you. Because are there needs around you, everybody? Someone please say yes. <laughs> there are, all the ways, all days. There's all these ways that we can do it for us to see. Now, what's interesting about this story, quickly, at the end of the story, those people who had worked in the temple, the church, the religious people, they had never seen this man for years, and he'd been there every day. When he starts dancing and having joy again because Peter and John saw him and gave him joy in life and saw him for the human he was, all those people suddenly noticed him. It says the people saw him and were filled with awe and wonder because God had done something amazing in his life. All because Peter what? Saw him. We need to see the things in our life for what they are. We need to pay attention, not go through life with a bag over our head. The hard part is sometimes you get a little tired, don't you? If you're paying attention all the times, it will exhaust you. It will make you tired. But each and every day we do have opportunities to share, to love, and to care. Now here's the thing. There's a phrase I, I've thought of this recently. I can do anything, but not everything. Does that make sense, everybody? You can do anything you want in a day. You've got choices all the day. You've got all these opportunities around you. You can do anything, but I can't do everything. So pick one thing. One way to see and help other people to see the love and the care and grace of God. Because how does God work in the world? Through who? You. Your hands. Your feet. Your body. Your voice. How else does God work in this world? He works through you and I, imperfect as we are, being present and understanding and do our best to share the grace and the love of Christ. Is it always easy? No, and it's not. So at, yesterday, the funeral was amazing. It was so great to be with them and share. I, it, it's, it's tiring for me. And then I went and watched Lucas in the musical, and I'm like, I am so crabby, but good job, Lucas. Yay! We got to share love anyway. You still do it. Life isn't easy, but we still have the energy because of Christ's love for us to do everything we can. You don't have to do everything. Do something to help other people to see the love of Christ. And then when that happens... We see the way God sees. I love this drawing about someone made with a cross on the tip top of their vision that we're called to see through the cross, through the Christ, through the one who gave his life for you and I so that grace and care can come to us and that we're filled with it and then we can't help but share it. Are you loved by God, everybody? Are you forgiven? And is God with you? This is the beginning those words, those affirmations, those yeses we say are the ways we begin to remind ourselves that God's with us as we go on to the world and see the way God sees the world. Is it always easy? No, it's not. But when we do our best, when we try, when we share and help and care, sometimes healing miracles happen. Now, a question for you today. Does God still heal like this story? Would that be great if like, you saw someone and they're like, hey, they just healed that like Jesus did. Wouldn't that be amazing today? Wouldn't that be awesome? They actually happens. Do you know how that happens? It's called doctors. It's called nurses. It's called our medical system. It's called places that care and know and have knowledge. And it also happens in other ways too. When you care, when you share, when you see, when you do your best to be present with those around you, do miracles happen? Yes. Does it always happen physically? Not always. But it always happens in your heart. 
It always happens in our spirits. I've been with so many people who I've been blessed with as they are dying. That even though their bodies are not going to function longer, they still are able to share and care and give love and help other people to see the goodness. Do miracles still happen today, everybody? Yes. And sometimes physical healing happens too. That's the truth. That's what we hold to. That as we go about our lives, we are the miracles in this world. Because who's going to go out in the world and share and help people to see? That's you. That's us. That's all of us as we do our best to help people to see, to believe in the miracles of God, grace, love, and care. That as we go out into the world and we do our best to be present, to see, we will help other people to see and trust in the love and care of grace of Christ too. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that we can come together and be reminded of how we're called to see the world. Help us to see the world as you see it, as opportunities to share life, to help others to have what they need, to bring joy and light, even in the face of hard, difficult things. And help us to believe in your miracles, in your healings that come in so many different ways and that Help us. We ask that you would help us and lead us as your people to go out into the world to share that healing and to help others to see. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all God's people said, amen. Please stand, everyone, as we sing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us. For our use, your fold prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. You have mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor, early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. As God's people, we are blessed to gather together to remember who God is for us, the grace that Jesus extends to each of us. And we pray these words of the Apostles' Creed together to remind us of what we believe and who we trust. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated unless you are a new member. Come on up right now. All right, Preston, you guys can come on up here and face me uh, in front of the first step. It'll be great. There's a few more. Here you go. All right. Good job in the musical, Addy, by the way. Good job. Let's pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have called us to the fellowship of the gospel and you bound us in love and service to your holy church. And we humbly pray that those who are this day united with us at peace and we with them may be one with you. We ask that we may together grow in grace, be fruitful in every good work, and succeed in keeping the unity of the Spirit in peace. We ask that on the day of Christ, we may be welcomed into the gathering of all believers, there ever to give you glory with your Son in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I ask, brothers and sisters, as members of Peace Lutheran Church, it is your privilege and your responsibility to join us regularly as we worship together, to hear the word of Christ preached, and to take part in the Lord's Supper. You are called upon to study the Bible and observe private and family devotions. As one who has been called by the Holy Spirit, you are asked to lead a life of faith and discipleship, a life of love, humility, and peace, a life that will build up yourself and your family and this congregation as the whole Christian church throughout the world. You are responsible for helping the life, the unity, and growth of this congregation as the family of God, your new family. I now ask you, do you believe in God the Father, the Creator, who as total love has spoken through Jesus Christ and promised all believers forgiveness of sins and life with him forever? If so, respond, I do. Do you accept the responsibility of membership in this church, which means that you become a part of a community whose members are committed to Jesus Christ and his way of life? If so, respond, I do. Do you promise that you will work to make uh, worship a celebration of joy rather than a reluctant duty? to grow in love with those of us who are members and with all human beings, to become an alive and sharing member of the church, to live your life in the world as a person who believes that Jesus Christ is the Lord of life, if so respond, I do. One more. We got one more. Do you promise to live in the faith, the faith that the church confesses, and in the covenant promise of your baptism, if so respond, I do. I do. And to you, the members of Peace Lutheran Church, these new members have made confession. They've stood here in this public place, which is always so much fun, right, everybody? We ask that as members of Peace Lutheran Church, would you accept these new members into the fellowship of this congregation and promise to grow with them in love and in hope? If so, respond loudly, we do. We do. You're in. See, there it is. I do now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great King and Head of the Church, admit you to the fellowship of Peace Lutheran Church and participation in all the spiritual privileges and responsibilities of this congregation. The blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. All right, the most painful part. Turn around, everybody. <laughs> that is the best part. All right, we got the Thompson family. We've got Eric and Kelly and Addie and your sisters in Sunday school. There you go. There's a certificate for you guys. And we got Preston. He got married last year. Baby on the way. Now you're here, Preston. Yay, Dana. Why didn't you come up here, Dana? You should have been up here. Where is she? Your wife, too. That's okay. We like you, Preston. And Mary Barlament. We're glad to have you today as well. Lots of friends here. I'm grateful for new members. Are you grateful for new members? <laughs> you guys can have a seat. Yep, go ahead and have a seat. Thanks, guys. Yep. Please stand, everyone, as we continue with our prayers today. We'll pray for our new members as, they, as they've joined with us today. We also pray for Mesa Keen, who will be baptized at the 1030 service. We also have a few people who we continue to pray for. Bob Madigan, as he's still in Rochester, uh, being, getting stronger with his new transplanted heart. We pray for Bill Martin, who had surgery this week and is recovering at home. And we pray for Alicia and Nate Thorson and their family as they grieve the death of Alicia's brother. We also pray for Andrea and Chad Fetterman and their family as they grieve the death of her father, Dale Bittner. We'll have a service for Dale at Ryan Funeral Home in De Pere on Wednesday. 
I will end each petition by praying the words, good God of grace. And your response is, receive our prayer. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all those in need of good news. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. You help us to see the world as you see it. As we gather together here in this place, we pray you would help and can help us to continue to be strengthened by your grace, your presence, and your love as we are sent out into the world to help others to see you too. God of grace, receive our prayer. O God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. We pray you would calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate, that this, climate would, this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, receive our prayer. And O God, our Father, you care for all your children. We pray that you would bring healing to those who are in need of any type in mind, body, or spirit. We pray that your miracles would continue to happen in our lives and in our world, that all people would know your grace and that you see them in care and love. We pray especially for your healing presence this day for Bob, for Bill, and that your promises and comforts of life to come would bring, to bring Alicia and Nate and Andrea and Chad and their families some measure of grace and comfort. God of grace, receive our prayer. And, oh God, we thank you for all the blessings that you continually shower down upon us. We thank, we thank you for these new members who have joined with us here at Peace. May we continue to all be together as your people here in this place to be reminded of your grace as we all are sent out to share that love wherever we can. And we thank you for Mae Zakeen as she will be named and claimed in the waters of baptism. May you bless her and all your children as they grow in your love. God of grace, receive our prayer. And we take a moment of silence as we offer the prayers from our hearts to God who promises to hear us. Holy Spirit, you're with us every step of the way. Your presence is one of the greatest gifts to us. But we pray, O oh God, that you would hear those prayers and answer. Answer them according to your own will, your own way, and your own time. And as we wait, we pray for your strength, your understanding, and your patience. God of grace, receive our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. We're grateful for your offering, giving back to God through peace. Our ushers will pass the offering place as one opportunity. We have a giving kiosk as well where you can slide a card if you'd like to do that and online to our website. But we'll hear special music from Brittany to remind us not just to give our treasures, but all of ourselves to God today and every day.
Thank you, Brittany. Please stand, everyone, as we pray our offering prayer together. And let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we draw all our hearts and minds together as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, and within you to give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sending song for today, we will sing, O God of Every Nation. There are four verses today. O God of every nation, of every race and land, redeem your whole creation with your almighty hand. Where hate and fear divide us and bitter threats are hurled, in love and mercy guide us and heal our strife-torn world. From search for wealth and power and scorn of truth and right, from trust in bombs that shower destruction through the night, from pride of race and station and blindness to your way, Deliver every nation, eternal God, we pray. Lord, strengthen all who labor, that all may find release. From fear of rattling saber, from dread of wars increase. When hope and courage falter, Lord, let your voice be heard. With faith that none can alter, your servants undergird. Keep right in us the vision of days when war shall cease. When hatred and division give way to love and peace. Till dawns the morning glorious, when truth and love shall reign. And Christ shall rule victorious o'er all the world's door.